please remember to leave a like, a comment, share the video about, and if you haven't already, subscribe. Thank you. Well, isn't this just fantastic? Toxic gossip train. This is part two, everyone. This is effort. Smash the like. To start off the month of July, Amberlynn Reed first of all addressed concerns surrounding her health by first of all explaining why it was totally okay for her to eat McDonald's. I'd be coming at you with like, hey, day 10 and no takeout. But I can't say that today. No, I can't. Biting the bottom lip and smiling all over the place. Hmm, almost as if... It's what you really wanted. I wonder why. I under ate yesterday, hardcore, and my body and my mind felt it. And when I under eat, I, I don't know what happens, but I don't, I don't know how to say no. And then to show us some receipts from her dietitian. The reason for the emails with the dietitian is because she has given up on the weight loss surgery because she was totally going to get it in the first place. She's given them essentially the WWE version of we wish you well in your future endeavors, but, but, but I'd like to keep on throwing money at you just so we can touch grass and base every so often because this is the nearest I get to actually going outside. A dietitian took it like a pro, but let's face it, I doubt they thought for a second she'd actually see this through. So if anyone had July as the month where Amberlynn Reed would officially quit trying to actually do something to better herself, well done. If you guessed sooner, you're also a winner. Because seriously, the cycle never ends. And just because this tickled me to no end, I'm actually going to read her email to you. I wanted to touch base about my progress towards weight less surgery. Recently, I've been feeling disassociated with the whole process and no longer have positive emotions towards taking next steps. This may be a temporary mind frame, but I want to give weight loss one last shot on my own. I want to continue using the tools you've all provided up to this point on my journey and will even be continuing with therapy. With that being said, I'd like to cancel my appointment this Thursday. I don't want to completely terminate my relationship with you all as there is still the possibility in the future of continuing to move forward with this process, but I would genuinely appreciate the time to try to make this work on my own. She was flayed on social media for that. She was also flayed in a follow-up video titled Destiny Hurt Me, I'm Moving, Osempic Intimacy, Self-Identity, Weight Loss Surgery and More Q&A. The liked dislike is taking an absolute pounding, by the way, but she still thinks she's receiving positivity. Okay, but that's adorable. During that Q&A, she actually addressed the fact she was on a stream with Destiny. You know, the one where she apparently didn't know, and she got really, really catty and triggered. Well, she said the following. Why did you agree to talk to Destiny at all, knowing it wouldn't be good for you? Oh, boy. <laughs> I didn't think my friend was going to choose any Destiny questions, but he did. I think I wanted, like, my own closure. I wanted, I wanted my own closure honestly i have so many questions that i wanted to ask her and i didn't i felt blindsided a lot of people think that i was watching her live and i definitely was not i had no idea that she was live and then once she told me she was live i said okay and then i guess her live ended or something because she said okay now we're talking in private and she never told me she went back on live stream she also took the opportunity to affirm that the version of her we saw when she realized that they were still live was not the real her no this is indignation amber anger lynn that's that's what it is Yes. When people say, oh, those are Amberlynn's true colors. No, that's not what you saw. You saw a side of me that is very angry, very betrayed. Toxic gossip train. For the time being concerning the story of Destiny and Amber, their back and forths, it goes to the side. This month will feature Becky as well, but also Feline. And that's because the very next video, in fact, two videos, concern the relationship of Amberlynn Reed and YP because they broke up and Amber was very upset by this. Now, usually I don't make it a point to dig into somebody when they go through quite harrowing experiences, okay? But when you make thumbnails like this, you chose those. Don't tell us you didn't. You chose them. And then you take a bit of a step back because the views on both these videos is exceptional. We know you're milking this. You also, for the most part, blame YP for everything without actually naming her as being the reason for the fault. 
but you expect something in a relationship. You expect it. And it was totally mutual, which is why you said mutual about a dozen times. Here's some clips from that. Feline and I have broken up. Um, it was mutual. It was mutual. And this was mutual. I don't have to go into detail. Love just isn't enough sometimes. I just, I know what I'm worth. Honestly, it doesn't even matter why we broke up. Um, it's personal. I just, I don't want to like shower. I don't want to like, um, obviously I'm not going to share everything, the real personal stuff, because why we broke up, it doesn't matter. What Amberlynn Reed adequately displays in this video is the five stages of grief. Well, the first two anyway. Shocker. Somebody who likes to milk all the abandonment issues from her childhood, manifesting it now because she's never really been single. She's always had someone almost immediately afterwards, and in August we'll talk about her opening up her DMs. Yes, that was a thing. Now in a follow-up video, which you saw both thumbnails of, she described more about the breakup but didn't go into too much. Yet again though, she reiterated similar points about knowing her worth and value. This then led to one of the cringiest podcast style videos where she and Feline have a conversation about the breakup. It's just a still image on the screen though, so I firmly believe they did this over Zoom because Feline's audio is dog shit. But much like the breakup video, the what happened after the breakup video, the heartbreaking conversation with my ex video did exceptionally well. Those three videos, to be honest, gave her an excuse to step back. But I will, for those who are interested, play a little clip of the heartbreaking conversation with her ex before we move on with the toxic gossip train. I've tried to explain that and some people don't believe in mutual breaking up and it is a thing. It's when two people agree to go their separate ways and we agree on that, as painful as it is. I mean, I guess to those people, like, you're in a sense lucky that you've never had to experience that. Yeah, because it's a different type of pain, this for sure. a different type of pain. Because, you know, if you end things on bad terms, you can wipe that person from your life and just move on, but it's like... Especially if you're not in love with them anymore. Yeah. Toxic gossip train. Not long after this cringe fest ensued, Becky, on her Kinda Good Kinda Beck channel via community post, said, So I have been threatened that if I speak on my truth, the law will be involved. Crying laughter emoji. Look how I was publicly treated, but I'm being threatened with the law. I saw the breakup video and the reason she's being so graceful with this one is because she thought I wasn't good enough, but this one somehow was. I did everything for her. And just like always, I was treated like garbage. I suffer every day because of what I was put through, but I'm the one who has to stay quiet? How is that fair? When Amberlynn Reed plateaued as a YouTuber, she was with Becky. Becky didn't really want to feature in her content. Since the breakup, Amber has been using Becky as a great example of how you shouldn't be treated. Amber's worth is far too great for a peasant like Becky, according to Amber, even though when Amber was bedbound, Becky, like Destiny, was washing her down with a hose and a car wash. Oh, I'm getting her food. Yeah. Later on, she put out another community post. She wants me to clear up that I mentioned the law first. Yes, back last September. Why? Because she wouldn't stop talking about me. This time, though, she said, if either of us talk about each other, we can get the law involved. That was just a few days ago since she texted me that. She wanted that cleared up, so there you go. Via Emblem Reads Instagram, why are you threatening Becky with a lawsuit, but you get to talk about very hypocritical? Beautifully written, by the way. I'm not, and I never would. Look at her newest post. She threatened it last September, and I agreed to it. I brought it back up and told her it still stands per her request from last September. She confused what I said clearly, so she corrected herself. Again, it was her who threatened it. Leave me alone about Becky. I want her to heal and thrive. I personally have nothing else to say. If you mention her again, I'll block you, thank you. Quite frankly, Becky should be able to do what Destiny's done, because you have gone out of your way to absolutely dunk on Becky for all that she did for you. And you really do use her as an excuse to say, well, I'm worth more than everything she did for me, and Destiny for that matter. But Feline was something else. Feline helped me on my journey, which is why I gained about 50 pounds. You've done so well on this weight loss journey, going for the weight loss surgery when they said consistent loss of weight for a year. You did it the other way and went up consistently. In fact, I don't believe you've actually lost a legitimate pound from your starting weight in January. But it's okay, everyone. We know who's really to blame for this. Toxic gossip train. 
I couldn't care less if Becky spoke about me. She could speak about me in every single one of her videos and I would not care. Just before we continue with Anne Boleyn Reads Month, I'm going to read another community post from Becky. I've gotten a few messages about a fundraiser that was started for me and a few people have sent me Venmos and though I need it, I make $11 an hour six days a week and still can't pay all of my bills. I mean, I am struggling, but I'm scared of accepting Yarl's help because I don't want to be like the last time I asked for help. I'm dealing with so much on top of possible thyroid cancer. I feel like the earth is just falling out from beneath me. I appreciate everyone who has reached out to me with help. I really do. I'm just afraid to accept help. The first comment underneath is the most adequate, apt, and accurate way of explaining perhaps this help is in good faith and you should consider accepting it, Becky. 100%. You've been through enough. You're not a saint. Of course not. But perhaps accepting the help would be good for you to move forward. Amber continued her month by deciding to copy her senpai, Chantel, by getting back into the spirit of the eating game and also going out and buying random tat she didn't need to buy because let's face it, she could have gotten it all for free from a shop. But Amber does like to collect things even if those things are boxes to put her crap in. Okay, so I'm gonna start with the vanilla. What is this? Mmm. Twinkie, um, her paw, she's going like this. She'll barely walk on it. She don't want to straighten it. So we're going to the emergency vet. They said it's a five hour wait. So we're taking her there. Okay. A few moments later. You guys, I have kind of, <laughs> in the last day, I have hardcore fixated on these wannabe legos that i've had none of these are the lego brand i just want to make that clear yes amber's priority was to show us her fake knockoff legos not her dog that's interesting um many point that in the comments obviously just an update for twinkie at this point they changed the pain medication and gave her something a bit more suited because she's getting older and she has joint pain which is quite common for the breed of dog that twinkie is on to home depot oh and just a yeah I'll point this out. Feline and Amber intend to live together for months while they sort out their newer accommodations, which is totally how breakups go. Yes, it's quite um unique. All right, so here is the moving aisle. This is wardrobe. I didn't even know they made wardrobe boxes. Yeah. Should I get them? Yeah. Right, is that what you're gonna be using too? Uh, <laughs> smooth, smooth as well. Do you want a wardrobe box? Um, no, I'm probably just gonna put everything in a suitcase. That's so depressing. I also think, though, for like dishes and stuff, we might get one of these. Now, before Amber moves, she has a goal. A goal has a goal, a weight loss goal. And to help her achieve this goal for our dear dainty girl, she's going to Walmart. Next stop, though, is we're going to the Walmart because I want to get like a visual representation of how much weight I want to lose um, before I move. So I've actually never been to this Walmart before, so I'm a little... Right now I'm in the PJs. This is super cute. I looked at the jewelry. Yep. I am in the journal aisle. I have to go to the arts and crafts section for what I'm really looking for. Oh, these are cute. You know. Okay, so I am in the art aisle and I had a few ideas, like putting balls in a cup. Then I thought of maybe adhesive gemstones on paper, but I think my final decision is I'm gonna get some of these craft sticks. You guys will see what I mean. So I did get some journals. Toxic gossip train. On the 20th July, Amber the Reed put out a video titled Break Up Update. I made a mistake and join Weight Watchers with me. Oh dear God, you're really doing that one again? Are you gonna start counting calories and telling us what all the free foods are? <sighs> screw the 56 pounds, screw the popsicle sticks. I'm just, I'm not doing good. I have to do something. I have to do, I have to. It's it, like, I have to do something. Something is better than nothing, and I'm currently doing nothing. So, the best thing I know how to do is Weight Watchers. So, oh my god, I have like mascara, like I hate, like literally all over my finger. It was like hanging off, dangling off. Ain't no dangling ankles, damn dangling mascara. I, 
am on my computer right now. We're going to do Weight Watchers. I am going to join Weight Watchers. <laughs> and um, it's better than nothing. Toxic Gossip Train. <laughs> I'll be honest, at this point I'm not entirely convinced that is the case. Oh, and before I forget, Amber, when it suits her, likes to push narratives about what she really is or what she currently has. Everything, remember? She is the cauldron of Nurgle. For example, not long after signing up for Weight Watchers, she also said she had binge eating disorder. Something which she's also refuted, but also said she has and refuted and says she has and refuted and says she has. You have binge eating disorder again. Honestly, I don't know. I feel like I have been binging. So I was told when I was an outpatient that you can binge and not have binge eating disorder, that there are people out there without the disorder who do binge. That's like only if you binge a couple times a year. Um, but if you're doing it a couple times a week, then that's when there's definitely an issue. And for me, it's been happening a lot. Uh, probably the worst my food intake has been in a very, very long time. I almost want to say worse than it's been in a couple of years. If anyone would like to estimate a guess in either the premiere chat or the comments down below as to how long it took Amberlyn Reed to quit Weight Watchers, do so now. You have until I get to three. One, two, three, four days. It took Amberlyn Reed four days to quit Weight Watchers, but it's okay. She has a valid excuse. Reason. She has a reason that also happens to coincidentally be an excuse. When I'm on Weight Watchers, I don't know what it is, but I am like psychologically triggered into ordering takeout for my meals. Takeout, and I'm tired of having takeout every day. Hello, hello. So I'm getting a late start to eating. I got some Panda Express. I wanted some Panda Express. And usually I get the three, like the, that big plate where you get three like meats, vegetables, whatever it may be, and then you get rice and or chow mein but instead this time i just got one of their like little bowls so i just got some chow mein and their shrimp but i also got an egg roll i'm sorry but their sweet and sour sauce with these egg rolls though are so good mm. their honey walnut shrimp slaps So sometimes our chow mein is good and sometimes it tastes like a refrigerator. So moment of truth has occurred. Ah. She doesn't taste bad. The final video of the month is titled Foodie Beauty Lying About Her Weight, Reaction Channels Are Biased and Air Fryer Pork Chops Vlog. Where in this video she showed us a grocery haul with a clip of admission, a rather amusing one, I'll give you that. Got some potatoes. I know I was just talking about carbs, but having one potato never hurt anyone, I promise. Not only did, am I fat and you had to beat on my back, but like I choked on a potato and shit my pants and almost like died in front of you, like. She also spoke about how she started on YouTube at around 370. It was 369, I believe, actually, but we'll round up just for you. She also kind of goes to bat for Chantel, no doubt still trying to get back in Chantel's good books, because Chantel is senpai to the person who eats all the pies. Obviously, I'm not saying everyone's like that, but there is a portion of her audience and a portion of my audience who want us bigger than what we really are. And I'm just like, I don't get it. I don't understand it. It's weird. It's creepy. But I feel like you have to be in that position to kind of understand how it feels. And I don't want people to think I'm sticking up for Chantel. It's just like, no matter if you're a good or a bad person, I think that like, why does the topic of how big someone is always has to be some weird conspiracy and people trying to make it like a lot worse than it already is when it already is pretty bad. For the month of August 2023, Anne Boleyn liked to believe this was the end of her heartbreak era and that a new era was upon us. The thing is, she had assigned it a completely different title to the kind of era it has been for a number of months. The era it is, is called non-tent, as in non-existent content. Her frequent uploads can be considered that of someone trying to raise enough money to move and buy brand new crap because she intends to throw it all out. Beyond that though, 
she's still just doing the same thing inside the same apartment, rarely venturing outside whilst trying to tell us and convince herself she is amounting to something and her weight loss journey is going in the right direction. Oh, that was hard to see. That was sad. Update on my life. I finished my makeup. Um, I went outside for a walk and it was nice. I came back inside. Like I was in a good mood. I came back inside. I was okay. But then like, I don't know. I just started writing poetry and I have not written poetry in a really long time. Like writing used to be like really special to me. Like, and I stopped feeling that way because of like outside things. Now within this non-tent era, she is also still doing the cottage cheese and that weak ass excuse for mustard thing where she likes to eat baby food because anything with texture is haram. All right, so I'm about to have some raw broccoli with cottage cheese, mustard, some leftover onions, and turkey kielbasa. This is my first meal of the day, and I prefer having this as my first meal because it's so freaking good. It's not, but you are welcome to delude yourself into thinking it is. As is well known, the single greatest meal to start your day is steak with a glass of whiskey. So I don't know why this is a hot topic, but I showed you guys me just taking a filtered selfie on my Snapchat which this is something I do every day and I've done for years. I only communicate with my personal in real life friends or family or whatever it may be on Snapchat and we're always sending photos back and forth or whatever it is. And now people like have a conspiracy that I'm looking for a girlfriend because I showed you a filtered photo. The thing with the photos is Amber does use them as a form of catfishing, but that's not the only platform YouTube that is that she does this. She also likes to pounce on trends where she uses TikTok videos of her without makeup to then make herself look like she's prettier than she is. It's not a good look really because the real her is what most would see. They see through the makeup because it tells us you have to put a concerted effort in to look like you might be passable. There have been many voices in June and July who have been speaking up against Amber. People from her past who have been in relationships with her or people in relationships with others near her who have, as a consequence of Anne Boleyn just being on the internet, gotten themselves into a lot of stress, problems, concerns. One would be an individual by the name of Rafe. A video was shared to Twitter by Alex is Shook, where Rafe revealed that being associated with Amber left them terrified of social media. But I don't want to talk about that right now. Because it doesn't matter. No. It has nothing to do with now. It doesn't. It, it was years ago. Yeah. And that person isn't in our lives anymore. At all. No. But, um, things still remain. The fear, the anxiety, the outright terror that I feel sometimes just <laughs> even wanting on to social media platforms because I never know who's going to message me. Amber for the most part ignored that and instead focused on bringing back her mukbang era by having something super duper healthy and did not, if you ate all of it, account for over 80% of your daily sodium intake within the space of 500 calories worth of food. You guys, this is an example of the way I edit. This is how I've always done it. But people thought I just spliced together a bunch of random clips. But now, as you can see, that is not true. I have weird things with food and I know a lot of people like to be haters and say because I'm fat, I can't be picky, but I really truly am. We also got a bit more of an inside look at how Amberlynn Reed edits videos on her phone, which explains an awful lot about this non-tent era which can be regarded as a tad amusing when you consider she sits at a desk for most of the day. All right, so I wanna show you guys a little bit of the editing process. So here is a grocery haul from the vlog that you guys saw yesterday. And I just wanna show you like how it looks. Cause a lot of people think that I just like throw a video in iMovie and then call it a day and then that's the end of it. I promise, no. I take out a lot and that's pretty much the gist of like what vloggers do um especially when you're just like a lifestyle vlogger you're not if you amberlyn reed are a lifestyle vlogger then you are a lifestyle vlogger for agoraphobics with attachment issues 
that are super morbidly obese and are deluded enough to think they can solve all their problems yet have failed for over 10 years in the online space, harming others in the process by dragging them down with you. The editing style you do is not what other vloggers do. It is an option, of course. Many hire editors because they want a better quality of video, or they just go on the computer because they can make it better, says the guy with the cartoon. Because Amber needs to do everything she can to maintain a semblance of retention of audience. Now this is key. She has to clickbait the crap out of her titles. I say this because when I went through her videos for the month, I noticed the most replayed parts happen earlier in the videos. And then you usually have a bar indicating at the bottom where the uh, timeline is. Yeah, the audience retention also shows. Hers dwindles about halfway through and drops right off throughout. She had been, for the past few months, making a point to put the most clickbaity bit near the end. That's what you really should do to get the audience retention, or just be more interesting overall. But because Amberlynn Reed resides within her apartment for the time being until she moves into another one, all we get is clickbait. I started this video by talking about how she believes the heartbreak era is what she's going through and how she's going to be coming to a new era soon. I, of course, and many others refer to this as non-tent era, because she can't decide what the era is called. She also doesn't realize how long an era is. She's been producing non-tent for a number of years. She put out a video titled Goodbye Heartbreak Era and New Era Incoming. A point, um, especially in this last like week or so, where I'm heartbroken, sure, but I'm heartbroken for like what could have been and that's sad, obviously. But I also know that like I can't just stay sad, I can't just stay heartbroken. I have finally like reached a point where if Feline was even to ask for me back, I would say no. Because I know what we both deserve. So I am leaving heartbreak era and I'm entering like a self-love era. If in September Amberlynn Reed, because of the self-love era, starts to sell you guys uh, adult toys, um, this is why. I do not believe for one moment Amberlynn Reed will be single for too long. She's never single for long. She really isn't. She's like a locust. She finds a harvest, she eats it, and then goes and gets another one, or at least has a backup plan before she gets there. She also told a little story about buying two plane tickets. We have number 18. Should fat people have to buy two plane tickets? I'm actually talking from experience because I have had to buy two plane tickets before. And it was actually really embarrassing because I had already been checked in. I was ready to go. I was just waiting to get on the plane. And then they pulled me up to the little spot. I don't, I don't know what you call it, but um, it was just like a spot where the workers were and there was like a, not a desk. What is it? I don't know, but they were just like standing there. And they said I had to buy another ticket. Yeah, that was embarrassing. Um, I was 17 years old. It did happen, yes it did, but it makes sense. In this same video, she also spoke about diets she will never do again on her weight loss journey. So we're gonna do number 26. What is a weight loss strategy you'll never try again? Oh, that's easy, Octavia. <laughs> what was I thinking, that era? That's a no for me. All right, let's do another one. Anyone want to place a bet for how long this lasts before she does Octavia again? Type moment, type deal, type situation. I guess we now need to talk about, before we get to Becky, Spanky the Big Bug. I'm calling him Spanky because it makes me laugh. Here is Spanky, as you can see. Yes, we have another bug type situation, type moment, type deal. Yeah, but Amber has an explanation for it, everyone. But we have some things to talk about, people. Trust. So, Feline decides to buy a bunch of fresh fruit, which, hi, okay, queen. I should probably be eating some of that. But something that I've noticed is that when we buy, especially, like, bananas, I don't know what it is, we get a lot of gnats. Yeah, we do. And I'm telling you right now, if y'all have never had a gnat crawl on you, then okay. But for the last two days, there's just gnats everywhere. I mean, that sounds kind of exaggeration, not like everywhere. There's a fair share. And before I film the clip um, in the video with my hair in a braid, you guys are like, oh my God, she has a flea. I was actually in the kitchen doing the dishes. So when that said, hi, I'm going to place myself on your braid. And um, we've actually looked up like gnat traps, like you can like make them um, not working. Just got to say that. So if anyone has like any recommendations of what to do, let me know. But yeah, there is no fleas in this house. That will not 
happen under my roof. Since we know from all previous girlfriends that you don't really do much in the way of cleaning, and that includes your own personal body hygiene, it is highly likely you are now talking out of your rooty tooty stinky booty. Last month, we spoke about Becky. Now we spoke about Becky because Becky had held back because of an agreement with Amber, but Amber continued to throw shade at Becky, so Becky decided to speak up. I know there are accusations that Becky might be a grifter, I'm going to save that for a separate video. But Becky had received a huge amount of support from people in the form of super chats and donations via Venmo. Let's see. Just wanted to congratulate on the 600 pound weight loss in 2021. Well, you know, it was a lot, it was life changing. And I thought it would be a lot different, honestly. <laughs> And as far as talking about my ex, I don't know if I can date ever again because I've just got so much trauma and PTSD coming out of that. I feel I'm ruined from being in relationships. I haven't, I haven't really been with anyone since. And whenever I would try to talk to people, I would slowly stop talking to them. I'm terrified. I'm so scared that I'm not enough and what I bring to the table isn't what any what anyone would want. I have a massive sweet tooth. I, hands down, I bet you I could eat a whole box of fudge rounds, which are eight in one box, in one sitting. I know I could. Like, I literally know I could. That is how bad my sweet tooth is and how comforting sweet food is for me like it is so comforting like a whole other level um it's almost like medicine and that's crazy to admit out loud because i don't know if i ever have before that like there are certain foods that feel like medicine to me like if i need any sort of like happiness or if i need like to be numbed out like if i'm super sad or i have anxiety or I feel lonely like if I turn to like my favorite ice cream instantly all my worries all my sadness all of that just completely goes away so let's get to the final video of Anne Boleyn's August of 2023 yes this one's titled we hooked up medicine for weight loss apartment tour and allergic reaction quick thing though over the course of the month she talks about how she's reacquainted herself with old friends but Amber has a very odd way of interpreting what a friendship is. She interprets it as something that is convenient for her. So once she's in a relationship, her friends all get thrown to the wayside because she is incapable of existing with multiple people within her life. But also I think because part of her thinks that it might be a form of emotional cheating. Yes, you remember that one from Destiny? Yeah. Okay, to the video itself now to finish this month off. A, like an actual plot twist in my life like i've given a lot of updates and a lot of people have like asked like you know are you and Flynn gonna get back together like have you guys like hooked up or anything and honestly i have like tried my very hardest to not do that not kiss her not hug her not anything and i don't know like what happened last night but we did hook up um uh, I don't even know why I'm sharing this. It's just my journey of life. And I know a lot of people like question like, why do you share so much online? Because that has been my life for 10 years. And we were so close to wipey era take two. Electric boogaloo. For 10 years, Amberlynn Reed has shared parts of her life and then simultaneously said she's not gonna share parts of her life to then share parts of her life all over again. She has done this over and over again because it's all she has. The final thing she does in this video is the part you're all going to want to hear, and that is the way in itself that she gets really happy about. 543.0 pounds. And then I'm gonna put my weigh in from Monday. So Monday was the 21st, so I'm gonna put that right here. 528.4 pounds. So I lost over 14 pounds that week. You're so dainty. Now jokes aside, congratulations on your weight loss. For someone of your size, to lose that amount that quickly isn't actually out of the realm of impossibility because all you had to do is lower your caloric intake so you weren't maintaining your weight. However, you are exceeding what is an acceptable amount of weight loss per week 
to a realm of unhealthy, which will inevitably lead to you, within a week or two, putting it all back on again. Still, you started the year around 519. You're still 10 pounds higher, and you're still over 500 pounds. You're still a quarter ton princess. And as far as your content goes, the only thing you've done that showed any level of quirk or editing was this. You guys, this is an example of the way I edit. This is how I've always done it. But people thought I just spliced together a bunch of random clips. But now, as you can see, that is not true. Throughout the month of September 2023, Amberlynn Reed was not the most present on YouTube. In fact, during the month of September, she uploaded only seven videos to her YouTube channel, averaging between eight to 10 minutes long each. We're gonna go through those videos, by the way, because they're non-tent. Still, the non-tent era, courtesy of her transitioning from YP1 era to YP2 era and a new state era, moment situation type deal is meh, yeah. Yet for all the non-effort she puts in, she is still doing quite well view-wise. But, based on what I know of AdSense at this time of year, if she's even getting monetized, because yes, YouTube is clamping down on very unhealthy lifestyle content, her views, even if monetized, are earning her not so much money. In fact, September was the worst month she's had all year, because she essentially took most of it off in favor of uploading Thirst Trap things, that kind of catfish, fatfish content, to TikTok. All of which is equally non-tent related because she just lip syncs to random bits of audio that I can't play because of copyright. On TikTok, it's not so much a problem because they're short enough and people don't seem to mind. On YouTube, if I played that audio, apparently everyone would mind. But this is what she has been focusing her attention on, even though she herself has admitted she makes no money from this. Bear in mind here, you could get hundreds of millions of views which she will never get on TikTok a month and she still make less than what she'd make if she applied herself to YouTube. She believes that by doing this non-tent, she's having more fun with herself, more fun with her career, more fun with her channel and her life. Really, she is trying to distract her very low attention span mind because, and this features in her content as well, that low attention span, she has sod all going on beyond leaving the state and moving to a new place, which is the main focal point of this month. So to make her very short video seem like she's actually doing something when she's not, each video encompasses a number of days. But since the video is between eight to 10 minutes long each, you can gather quite quickly what she's actually doing in those days. Sod all seems to be the apt way of phrasing it. Celine's like workout stuff her vitamins and such, but some of it might be old, so. The arc of moving is quite the interesting one when you consider typically when we move, we pack everything we move, we get out of there, right? We exchange properties or we buy a new place, we move. If you're a vlogger, you vlog everything because that's where you make the money. In the context of Anne Boleyn though, no, she's not been vlogging much of that at all. In fact, all you've seen her do is empty cupboards and organized old boxes that are already full to put new stuff in by taking old stuff out. You'll notice in much of what we're going to see, Anne Boleyn is not the most sentimental. If something makes her feel sad, it's gone. Sadness guaranteed, it's out of there. But then at the same time, she'll contradict it by still having things that look like what she's thrown out, but look slightly different. She'll keep those instead. It's, it's an odd thing, but the most viewed thing in a number of her vlogs is a weigh-in. Now, not in every single video this month, but in a few of them. And I'm gonna play those back to back. And there's a reason why you'll understand in a moment. I'm just gonna put whatever weigh-ins I have um, right here. Hello, today is Monday the 28th. I'm about to do my weigh-in. Last week, on Monday the 21st, I was 528.4. Hello, it's ready. Now let's see what I am this week. 514.0 pounds. Okay, today is Monday, September 4th, my weekly weigh-in. Hello, it's ready, 511.4 pounds. Okay, you guys, so August 7th, um, I'm a little nervous for this weigh-in because I am a little swollen. I've been doing a lot of walking, a lot of packing, that's just how it goes. Hello, it's ready. 
but I'm still eating how I have been. So let's see if I've made any progress. 510.6 pounds. So my two main points of criticism with that. Firstly, is that she only did three weigh-ins for seven videos in the month. There's a reason she stopped. I'll show you that soon. The second is, she didn't show us a weigh-in at all. She uses the same scales that Nikocado uses that declare a weight, and it seems to be going down. That was in the first, second, and fourth video she put out of the seven during the month of September. We don't see her on the scales. We don't see anything. She intentionally angles it at the ceiling rather than have the camera angled where we can see her get onto the scales. Either that is because she does not actually weigh that much or weighs more, or because she doesn't want to be mean to high heaven because she knows if we see her waddle onto those scales, it's going to look like an accident waiting to happen. So I don't really consider these quarter ton princess weigh-ins to be valid in the slightest. In the last video she put out in September, she was asked if she'd been doing weigh-ins. And here's the answer she provided to the quick fire question. Next question is, when is the last time you weighed yourself? I actually have not weighed myself. Oh God. I know for sure it's been at least like 10 days, maybe more. It is the belief of the majority that the reason Anne Boleyn Reed stopped the weigh-ins was because she likes to contradict herself on a regular by saying she wants to share more, but when she shares too much, she gets a lot of criticism and then feels like she's sharing too much, so she should stop sharing. A lot of SH words then, I might have fumbled a little. If I develop a lisp, it's because of that. Anne Boleyn Reed's moving arc is something we should probably get to after we get to the fact that Anne Boleyn Reed has been courting another individual while simultaneously re-hooking up with Feline, who, you know, she's leaving for this person that she's in love with. Here are relevant clips now. And trigger warning, yes, Amber does in fact have a hickey underneath her chins. Hey guys, welcome to a new video. Just things that I'm going through. Um, and no, this is not a bruise. It's exactly what you guys think it is. Whatever. So a lot of people were asking, Where's the hickey from? Which is kind of going away. They're from Feline, which brings me to the next question. People are asking, are we still hooking up? Yes. There have been quite a few people asking like, how can you move on from Feline when you were so deeply in love with her? And honestly, I, I don't know how it happened, but I did fall in love with someone else. Just for those who don't know the cycle of Anne Boleyn Reed, when she gets with someone, she likes to break them down so that she can control them. She did it with Destiny and then did it to Becky. A real sign of those commitments to her was that when she was bedbound during both of their relationships, they did everything for her. She'd just buy them some random tat to keep them nice. This couldn't be said true for Wipey or Feline. Amber and Reed though, when breaking up, will still live with them for a time while simultaneously looking for another place to live in a different state. Before she's even moved in, she will have found someone else to be with. She did it with Destiny, she did it with Becky, and she's done it with Feline. However, it hasn't all gone her way, and yes, one of those that she was hooking up, trying to hook up, trying to get with, in love with, whatever, uh, no, didn't happen. But she is still trying to get a new YP, who I'd like to dub YP Take Two, and then maybe Electric Boogaloo, possibly Folie Deux because at this point it has to be madness when someone carries as much internet notoriety that you have to be so isolated a quick google search would tell you enough but you don't do it. Now let's talk about the moving arc because throughout all seven videos Anne Boleyn was doing some form of packing and I want to show you a clip from each video just to show you how much effort she's putting in to these three minute clips that she's putting together to make an eight minute video so she can sprinkle extra ads in. Since the ad system's changing, that's not gonna work out much longer. Just deciding things that I don't want, whatever I don't want, um, Feline is gonna go through and decide if she wants, but yeah, so many things. Do you guys remember? Stream Queen. So let's go in my closet together. My closet's kind of a mess right now, but it's because I'm moving. A bunch of this stuff, oh my gosh, these are just random things that Feline and I would do together. Are we still hooking up? Yes. Um, but I'm going to go through these and see which ones I want to get rid of. If there's any that are attached to memories that I don't want, definitely getting rid of that. 
I thought I had more that had like memories, but I didn't want to keep any that were like deers. Um, because it makes me sad. But I am, there is one like white deer right here. All right, you guys. So, so far, this is everything that I have packed and put in the corner of the office that is gonna be going with me. All right, I found her. This is the one, folks. Let's do it. All right, so we also went to Home Depot and got a bunch of boxes. I forgot to film in there, but we needed boxes for like the TV and pictures and paintings and stuff like that. In six out of seven videos, she documented aspects of the moving process. In one of them, she spent an inordinate amount of time talking about anxiety because she self-diagnosed. She also self-diagnosed an allergy to shellfish or crab because her nose itches in the form of seafood boil because she knows with the views flagging where the views are, but she won't commit to it because she thinks she's doing right by herself. But as the views are going down consistently, she's going to need to make a choice soon as to whether or not she wants views or not to fund her life, pay for her live-in carer, and of course, keep the business going so she can continue to buy all the random tat that she forms no sentimental attachment to but will happily discard as much of it as humanly possible because memories, which I found highly amusing when she had two boxes full of wax melts. But we'll do the seafood boil clip first. So I got some food. Uh, I got seafood boil, which is one of my favorite meals. It absolutely, without a doubt, makes my nose itch, but it's totally fine. Wow, that stuff went. So this is my meal for the day, obviously. And I never finish it either, but it's so good. Let me show you up close. So this is what it looks like. First question is, are you still doing OMAD? And the answer is no, I'm not. This answer can be considered truthful because we know she binges off camera to maintain the weight she's at. Although for both meals that she really showcased this month, she claims to not eat an all of it. That cannot be further from the truth, honestly. This is supposed to be a kid portion of just buttered pasta. I was expecting like a small portion, but that is a lot bigger than I was expecting. I just wanted that as a side because my main thing I got is this veggie burger, which is made with brown rice, mushroom, tons of other veggies. And there's avocado on there. There's cucumber, lettuce. Oh my God, it looks so freaking good. Like, doesn't that look great? The only way that pasta portion is for kids is if it feeds at least two of them. Now, just before we go to another rather amusing tidbit that happened during the month, I'm going to show you the wax milk collection because it's a lot and just further proof of Amber's hoarding that we've all known about for years and her lack of attachment to anything. She just buys, buys, buys in excess as if she's planning for some kind of nuclear winter. But I just went through all of these wax melts. My nose is broken, I swear to you. These are all the ones I'm gonna get rid of. And this is just the little bit that I'm going to keep. This took so long, but I just felt super obligated to smell each and every single one and decide if I wanted it or not. Who remembers Kankelgate? I swear there has to be a shrine for this. An area of the world where a memorial needs to be placed to retain such an important part of world history. Amber took us there, as if she was going to lay some flowers there, perhaps. There are a couple things I'd like to say after she's said her piece on this. So I don't know if I ever showed you guys this before, but I'm out taking Twinkie walks. And this is where I fell. <laughs> if you guys remember last year, See that like little hole? My foot just went and I fell down this little hill, so. I'm gonna put the video back on the screen here and mute it so I can make some points. Firstly, you went for a walk at night. We know for a fact Feline has been taking your dog out during the day. This is one of the few times where you've actually gone outside. A couple of the times, suitcases was the other one. Or to get one of those milkshake smoothie things that, you know, only come in one size every one. All right, here we go. Wait, this tastes like the one that I make at home. <laughs> Try it. Wait, what did you get? Mango berry cosmo. Mango, mango berry cosmo with coconut. 
<gasps> Whoa, that's good. It does taste like the one you make at home. Mine's called, it does, doesn't it? With the PB2, yeah. So this one's called peanut butter cup and it tastes just like the one that I make at home. These are big. Was there smaller sizes? They only have one size? Damn. Another point is that you consider that a little hill. I live on a little hill, but I promise you, what we determine in the United Kingdom to be a little hill, you would consider Mount Everest. That is not a little hill. If it was, you'd get a core workout just walking up it, and you don't. The whole Canklegate situation moment type deal thing was your fault, because you waddled too far to one side at night and you couldn't see where you were going because there wasn't enough lighting. Either that or the light was behind you and your shadow was so big you couldn't see your feet in front of you. Have you considered wearing some kind of torch around your neck aimed at the floor and reflective footwear perhaps? That might have helped. A torch would have worked wonders for you. While during this month I can fully understand, respect and appreciate one is preparing to move so there is less time to make content. When she does make content, she is still doing the exact same thing she has done for the past three years. Living like an agoraphobic, doing absolutely sod all, telling us about her day, but showing us nothing in the process. As if her existence is a giant video diary, but the giant video diary just shows unrealized potential where she could be more and chooses to do nothing. The only thing that's uniform in her videos beyond that is that she starts each and every day the exact same way. Hey guys, so it is the next day. Hey you guys, so it is the next day. Hi you guys, it is the next day. So it is the next day. So it is the next day. I would say this is disappointing, but Anne Boleyn Reed, by definition, has become disappointment. Thank God we're nearly done with the year. October 2023 is an important month for Amberlynn Reed. It is important because she was more active. Her views weren't as good, they haven't been very good for a while, but she was more active, not only on YouTube but also on TikTok, where she posts thirst traps and other content which I'll show some of later to drive home a point. The Kentucky non-tent era is coming to an end early in this month, and the Oklahoma non-tent era begins. It begins alone, but not alone. And I'm sure given more time, those that are with her will be on camera as well, because she'll need them to have them on blast so that more attention comes her way. So her continued poor decision making in her non-tent era really gets some oomph and ups those views. October also marks 10 years for Amblin Reed being on YouTube. When she started, she weighed about 365 pounds and intended her YouTube channel to be a weight loss diary. 10 years later, she is 511 pounds at the start of this month. That is quite the commitment to the cause. She has rised, plateaued, and is now going through a steady decline. A decline of her own machination because she couldn't be asked to simply do what was right for her. So we'll start the month with The Movers King, Furniture Is Gone, Starbucks Order, and Publishing My Writing vlog, where she got 6.8k downvotes to 910 upvotes. And the top comment, rest in peace to the office where she worked countless hours assembling Legos and sitting at a standing desk. Hello, hello, welcome to a new vlog. Welp, I'm sitting on my bed. We have no sheets on her because the moving company comes today. So this is currently my office with all my stuff in it. So this is literally everything. I moved in this apartment with cancer and I'm moving without it. Amber spends the first half of the video going around the apartment, telling us about the memories, but not telling us about the memories. Yeah, it's kind of tragic as if this is vlog material, right? The most replayed part though is the Starbucks order and there's a good reason for it. Hello, hi. It is the next day and I'm super tired. It was a hard night's sleep for sure. And I really wanted caffeine because there's a lot of things that I have to do today. And I usually get a chai tea from Starbucks, but for some reason, no Starbucks around here has the chai tea. So I got coffee for the first time in a hot minute. Coffee gives me anxiety, so that's fun. It's just like a blonde coffee. Caffeine also gives me anxiety, so I don't touch it. I avoid it like the plague. Starbucks Blonde Roast Coffees, a 16 ounce grande cup of the coffee contains 360 milligrams of caffeine. The daily recommended amount at most from the FDA is 400. If you get anxiety from caffeine, I don't recommend drinking a blonde grande. I really don't. I keep mine at zero. I would highly recommend you do the same. Just because you can't get chai tea doesn't mean you want to give yourself some palpitations. Although since most of your diagnoses are self-diagnosed, this is a tad tragic. 
Oh, and we'll finish this video with a mini mukbang before we go to the next video. I don't know, but that's okay. Oh yeah, that's good. So this just has like egg, sausage. I'm allergic to eggs, so let's only get two packs. Oh, they have some eggs over here that are already made. A little bit of potato, something like that. I don't know. It's pretty tasty. Considering Anne Boleyn over the past three years is putting on even more weight to lose a little to put on more weight to lose a little, I am somewhat surprised with her views dwindling she won't just go back to doing mukbangs because she weighed less half the time, but also got more views. She seems adamant that the path forward that she is forging, new Lynn, new non-tent, in new state soon, is the better path for her to prosper, but the reality is she's not making as much money as she used to, so there's no version of this where she will benefit unless she plays to her strengths. But also for this to work and for her to prosper, she needs a partner on screen so she can belittle them, buy them crappy little trinkets, and base her life around their interests while claiming it's all quirky and cool. Yeah, that's content too. On to video number two, titled Weigh In. Officially leaving Kentucky and 15 hour road trip vlog. It got more likes than the last one, and many comments at the top, although this could have been moderated, seem to be more positive. Although I want to draw attention to the fact her ex drove her for 15 hours to her new home. Yeah. Okay, so I'm about to weigh myself, which I have not done in like a month. I don't know. Last time I weighed myself was like 5'11. I might have gained some weight, so let's do it. Hello. I just want to draw attention to the rather peculiar jump cut in that. I don't quite understand how that happened, unless Amber fudged it, which to me makes more sense because the camera didn't move, but the jump cut indicates the camera was moved. That was the most replayed part of the video. The clips I want to show you next are of the journey getting there as opposed to Amber getting all gooey about, this is my last morning here, this is my last wake up here, my last dog walk here, my last kofifi here, because I don't care about any of that and I don't think you do either. But I do hope that we can find out how this is considered low-key super exciting and best blog and all the other pleasantries that were totally not filtered. Goodbye. Okay, so we're officially in the car and we have tons of stuff back there. Uh you see wasabi crawling on that top part i was not expecting them to use that part like i didn't really want to like 100 talk about it but like yeah i'm having some anxiety i don't like being in the car i have car anxiety <sighs> i also have like health anxiety okay hello hello it's been i don't know i'd say a few hours and everything's fine um we're just stopping to get some gas i'm gonna walk around a little bit i'm gonna stretch it's our second stop it's been a couple hours but i'm doing I guess better than I thought it would be. Going over a bridge with some pretty lights. Okay, so I'm in some random bathroom in Waffle House. Um, I have to go pee really bad. Y'all, it's 4.30 in the morning and I've realized I have no idea where I am. My legs are bothering me. I did not want this to happen. I knew it was going to, but they're very swollen. Is life real right now? Hello, it is daytime. I am so tired. Um, we stopped one or two other times. I didn't vlog. I've just been in my own little head. That is arguably the most exciting thing Amber has done in three years. It's just a shame her version of this kind of travel vlog is less in-car entertainment, where she would undoubtedly have fallen asleep or spent her time TikTok, Snapchat, or doing Q&As, which if she did one, I didn't see it, to instead just fall asleep, no doubt. But she did make it. Congratulations, Amber. The Oklahoma arc begins anew. Non-tent take two, everyone. Electric boogaloo. Y'all, I have officially made it to my destination, so I'm going to end this vlog, and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye. And in her first video there, titled First Day in New Apartment and New State, She's Gone and Target Hall Groceries, Amber did absolutely sod all. The most replayed part was her buying groceries, in fact, and that was it.
though I forgot that I was filming in the grocery store because a subscriber came up to me and was the sweetest person I've ever met. Because of the bags in her grocery trolley cart thing, people were able to work out what state she was moving to. Granted, she'd mentioned 15 hour car journey, many could work it out from there. No one believed for a second she was going to go from Kentucky to Bozeman, Montana. In this vlog, she also showed off some of her favourite cleaning products, which I don't really think is worth showing you, but also another weigh-in, and that I do think you need to see. Although these weigh-ins are quite peculiar, with the camera facing the ceiling and all that. Alright you guys, new apartment, new bathroom, that means new weigh-in. Let's do it. Hello. It's ready. Hello, hello. 508.8 pounds. The next clip I want to show you concerns Amber reminiscing about losing Feline. Now, there's a reason for this clip, and I'll explain why afterwards. Things have been very, 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 very up and down with her. Like, either way, I'm losing a very, very, like, special person to me. A very, very important person to me, and I'm losing them. And it's hard, and I'm trying to, like just be okay with being alone on her tiktok she's been posting these videos with music in the background emotional emotive to sympathy music that kind of crap bitch you sat there and you've added that music to that video very short clip there'll be no sympathy because anyone with an iq over one with two functioning brain cells would have noticed you still made the effort to make that and upload it to TikTok. There is no sympathy to be had with someone begging attention. The next video I'd like to show you is called What State Did I Move To? As if no one knew already. Spending time with my mum and let's go to bingo. The most replayed part isn't the bingo itself. The most replayed part concerns Amber learning to adult. Because it turns out after all these years of always being in relationships, Amber doesn't actually know how to do anything remotely adult on her own. So I'm going to show you that first and then I'm going to show you Amber playing bingo because I actually found that to be quite wholesome. Wholesome, 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 wholesome. That's the word. Hey guys, I'm about to use this washer for the first time. I, I don't know what I'm doing. So it's like one of those Samsung like touch. I don't know. It's like technology. Okay, we're good. Oh, there's like a little max level. Not me being a boomer. Is there a place for me to put these guys? All of my dirty clothes are in here. There is something I want to include from earlier in the video where Amber confirms the state she's in. Granted, we already knew it, but I do want to make a point. A lot of people are like, where are you moving? It's not that I was like keeping it a secret. I just haven't felt compelled to share, but I live in Oklahoma. I'm now going to install something into your head. You're going to hear a lot or will have heard a lot and not noticed. Amber then finishes every sentence with a question. She sounds like a wannabe valley girl. Now onto the bingo, where Amber's mum actually had a suggestion for her. Oh, mom. <laughs> I'm leaving that laughing. <laughs> Oh my god, should have filmed when I yelled bingo. To the next video, titled I'm single and drinking in my closet, my electricity got turned off, cook breakfast with me. This demonstrates a number of things. Firstly, she's a lightweight when it comes to alcohol. I got some of two of these like buzz balls. I have no idea. They're like chillers. This is pineapple colada chiller and this is a choco chiller. And then I got a six pack of the mango white claw. Oh, bitch. Wait, 10 out of 10 recommend, wow. So the rest I'm just gonna put in the fridge. Now it's time for this guy. It says to shake well. Whoopsies. <gasps> That's good too. Why am I this person? Oh. <laughs> Why am I this person that gets super red when they drink wine? I'm now on White Claws. Mango's the only one I could drink. Mango's the only one I could drink and not gag. All the other White Claws make me gag. I am single getting drunk in my closet. Second, Amberlynn Reed is forgetful, but also doesn't know how to adult. So random fact about me is I pay all my bills on time. I'm very responsible in that way, but I must have been like so much on my mind that I forgot to pay like the setup fee for electricity. So my power went out today and I was like, what is happening? There's no storm. 
like this has always been my fear like forgetting to pay the electricity and her breakfast is trash i think i'm gonna have some bacon i'm also gonna grab my eggs and my scrambled eggs so i'm gonna grab the garlic salt so the bacon i use is pre-cooked bacon but i just love the texture of it i just wish i would have had like a little bit of spray so they wouldn't stick but but it's okay everyone amberlynn saves the video with another one of her stellar meals that is totally not baby food hello so i'm hungry oh. i'm desperate for food i don't really have much to eat Okay, so I usually get the Daisy cottage cheese, but my mom's like, get this one, it's so good. Let's try her. So I've officially drank both the buzzed. I'm on my second can of White Claw. All right, let's do a bite with a little bit of mustard, like a... <gasps> By the way, those um, earlier cocktail drinks, the buzz balls, are around 17 to 18%. And White Claws, I don't even think they register alcohol. They're so bad. Now, what we want to do when you're Amberlynn Reed, you're in an area that's known for storms, which you're afraid of, but simultaneously not of. Okay, isn't it pluviophile? Is that the word? Yes. It's funny what you say you are when you're with partners. Didn't you also say you were a gamer at one point? Anyway, Amberlynn Reed has very addictive personalities. So what you want to do when you have that kind of personality is take her to a casino. In a video titled, My Love Life Sucks, I'm Not Dieting, let's go to the casino exclamation mark times three vlog with 6.5k down votes this one was not well received because of that addictive personality and the concern that she's going to erode whatever she has left in resources with this addiction that she will inevitably have okay so this is probably really silly to some people which i understand it's gonna be but my bucket list i've always wanted to go to a casino i know that's like so weird but it is something on my bucket list and we're doing it today. At the casino. <laughs> oh, no. I tried to get to go to church. Oh, is this my, is this my credit right here? Machine thingy. <laughs> The most replay part of this video is another one of these random bits I don't quite understand. I'm gonna play it and we're gonna try and understand it. Hello, hello, it is the next day. So I have not even used my bathroom door, which is right here, because I still have these that I have to get rid of. There used to be so many, and you're supposed to set them out for trash valet, but I feel bad, so I've only put out like one to two a day. So the pile has very much lessened, but it's happening very slow, because I don't wanna, I don't know, I just don't wanna bombard them with a bunch of boxes. And then my grandma actually let me use this mattress for when I first moved in, because my stuff wasn't supposed to be here on time. But it's finally getting picked up today, so I'm actually going to be able to use this door. I actually need to set out these guys tonight for the trash valet. Just these two right here. Oh my god, look at all this space. It can be argued in this month she's made more content than she has in three years. In the sense of actually going outside and doing some activities. Along with, of course, things being removed from the apartment. The final part of this video I want to show you concerns a family traditional meal which, upon close inspection, looks like, and it probably is, derived from any student meal handbook, in the sense of, if you have ingredients, throw them into the pan. The result is apparently delicious. Uh, my mom and her boyfriend are coming over, and we're gonna cook grandma's recipe. I've actually made this on my blog before. It's just like a family recipe. So, for the recipe, um, you need soy sauce, eggs, scallions, bacon, and spaghetti. That is literally all you need. Okay, so I got all of this cleaned up and wiped down. A small part of me is looking forward to the day that Amberlynn Reed finally has a mother on camera who's not ready to yet, and I fully understand that because Amber needs that second person so that they can do mukbangs together. Amber will bring back shrimp gates, no doubt, more of her mother's and grandmother's recipes. It may well actually change Amber's fortunes in the sense of viewership, or maybe her mother will do what many expect, and Amber in turn will then leave, as will be expected, because it's Amberlyn Reed. Over the course of the month, Amber has made things seem more profound than they are, made big deals out of things that are literal nothing burgers, and she is 
adapting and adjusting while claiming she's incredibly happy living alone because she's learning more about herself. In doing so, she's also shown just how inept she is at all of this, the whole adulting thing. Because now she's on her own, her content is all on her. In the past, she relied on everyone else to ferry her about. With Feline, she didn't have much of an option. She just tried to come across as agoraphobic while simultaneously seeming energetic because Feline, when they first started dating, was the best thing that ever happened to her and helped her on her weight loss journey, which is why she weighed more when they broke up. The final video I want to show you is called Gambling Addiction, Struggles Living Alone and Looking for a New Girlfriend. 4.6k down votes to 1k up votes. Top comment. A great way you and your mum could spend time together is by maybe going to a Zumba class at a gym. Since you've made dancing videos at home before, spending time together in a positive way plus reaching your health goals. If only Amber could go long enough to not make every excuse to not do something, she could actually do something like that that would in turn benefit her. All right, shower is completed. You guys know like situation type deal, moment type deal. Hi. I got some packages. This is gonna be my first Amazon haul in this apartment. And I also ordered um, some food. So I see we're going back to the good old days of the Kentucky non-tent in Oklahoma now. Fantastic. No, I'm not going to bother showing you what she ordered because it slaps. That's all that matters, right? Instead, I'm going to skip over the fact her tumble dryer is making a weird knocking noise. Get help for that. I'm going to skip over the fact that you didn't know how to set up Wi-Fi because it's too advanced for your boomer brain and instead go to a Q&A. Okay, you guys. So like I said, I had you guys ask me some questions. So let's answer some of them. What's the most difficult part of this move? Honestly, the hardest part for me is the worst feelings you can feel and it's heavy will you weigh yourself on camera anytime soon yes i will does going to bingo in the casino feel addictive to you no not at all so things like gambling for me i just it's not an addictive thing for me at all the last question i want to show you is whether or not amberlyn reed is looking for a new girlfriend we all know the answer is yes because she always needs a partner always to take the burden off her shoulders of course this is the answer she gave though are you looking for a girlfriend right now? No, I want to be single. I don't want to be in a relationship. It's not something that like I'm looking for, which is crazy because it's like, I feel like I've always been in a relationship or just like looking for one. And right now I'm like, no, there is some love life drama behind the scenes that I'm not going to talk about things that I do deal with um, on a day to day basis, which could probably seem confusing now that I've even brought it up. She finishes this video by teasing four subjects as potential story times for the future. Now I find this fascinating because I've got to do November at some point, which means I will undoubtedly have to find these, these very important questions for to be exact, the following questions for that matter. So there are four more questions that I will not be answering, but these are questions that I will be talking about in the near future. Have you ever been asked to be on a reality TV show? What was the psychologist you said you were going to that specialized in something? What couldn't you tell us during your weight loss surgery journey that you can share now? And what was the thing that you were going to tell us once you moved? So all of that is going to be answered soon. There's just no way, because most of this is like story time-esque, so there's no way I can answer all four of these questions in this video. I'm going to press X to doubt now that she'll answer any of that in a story time and instead make it a throwaway comment at some point within the month of November's non-tent in Oklahoma. We are into the final month. I know, peak excitement. Gone the tragedy of it all. It has been a long, long year, especially for somebody like Anne Boleyn, whose era of non-tent is still going strong. Yay. So to start this month off, we're going to go with a tipsy Q&A over Instagram. This is one of those warning signs where perhaps she should consider being more present on YouTube because she can't monetize the Instagram crap and her income is diminishing. What makes me feel most confident? This filter. <laughs> I use it all the time. Literally all the time. Okay, so based off of your question, the answer is no. Because your girl can't drive. She don't have a license. So we don't do illegal things over here. Okay, I've tried to focus on this Q&A. <laughs> and it's not working out very well. So I love you guys. Was that a ghost? Or did they think my fingers was a person? Oh my god. Hey, I do have a little friend. 
<laughs> so I'm eating sunflower seeds. And sometimes I'll crack them like that and then eat them. And then other times, I just eat the whole damn thing. Over the year, there has been an increase in Tipsy Lynn Reed content. It is slightly worrying when that is what she relies on to be able to answer questions concisely. But go figure, Amber needs to cut loose a little. No doubt she'll attribute it to increased stress levels from being an adult on her own. Oh, and this video that you just saw has since been deleted from the Instagram. I wonder why. I actually do cuss a little. Do you? <laughs> also, What's yeah. What's your favorite curse word? Probably <laughs> Amber's been very active on TikTok, posting her usual thirst trap nonsense, while also implying that during this month and the month before, she was being ghosted. Although, it could be the case that she was being ghosted by Feline because she cheated on Feline at the end of their relationship with a new person, New YP. Or it could in fact be New YP ghosting Amber at this point. The video you see on the screen, no audio, of course not, terms of service and all that. Amber did in a separate video talk about whether or not she is or Feline is done with her by saying the following. Has Feline ghosted you? Okay, so the answer is no, but I really hurt her after we broke up by falling in love with someone else. I hurt her a lot and I take accountability. I obviously just could not control falling in love with someone else. Um, I very much can't help but look to the side like all liars do, calling it love because you don't actually know what the word means. I fell in love. Um, I did. And it just was really hard for her and it became hard for me and it became a very big mess. And it just really went to show like how much she did love me and I felt horrible and I tried to fix it, but I kept failing at fixing it and it made it to where she doesn't even want to continue being my friend. So I went through like a whole separate heartbreak in private. Don't try and make this about yourself. You cheated on YP. You two were together, you failed her, you say you tried to fix it, but you couldn't, so she now has essentially ghosted you. You were lucky she took you to Oklahoma. What you call heartbreak, the rest of us call consequences of the following. All right, today we're gonna to talk about how we can find out and how much we can find out and what it takes to get there. So first we have to decide how much do we wanna find out. I wanna find out at a level of seven, okay? So I find that level on my graph and I come horizontally to my gradient line. Where it intersects with my gradient line, I'm gonna come straight down to where it intersects with my f around line. That there is gonna tell me how much I have to f around to find out what I need to find out. See, as you can see, the more you f around, the more you're gonna find out. Like, I just feel like I'm reliving the heartbreak just a million times over. We were cordial for a bit after she left. Uh, we would text, then like almost daily I would text her like, I love you, I miss you, because I just felt like I needed her to know. And I needed her to know that I was sorry that I hurt her. I talked it over with a friend and they said, I think it's time that you just like respect her and stop contacting her and it's been really hard. This is gonna sound dumb to some people, but I am on day five of not contacting her. And I know a lot of people are gonna be like, it's so unhealthy. Trust me, I get it. I have mental illness <laughs> and- You, Amber Lynn Reed, having a mental illness does not make you the expert of mental illness. You're not the avatar or arbiter of it either. You act like some kind of gatekeeper half the time. Feline was my very best friend for like over two years. You know, I thought I was gonna marry her and um, it's just been really, really hard. So we are not in contact and I'm going to be respecting her wishes even if it's really freaking hard like it's been so hard like i have wanted to call her i've wanted to text her in just these last five days and it's like i can't and it's just been a water level of torture because i miss her so much and i just think out of respect for her and for myself and for our relationship i just i don't want to talk about her and i know a lot of people think that like i'm gonna come on here and say bad things about her not gonna happen it's never gonna happen i think going into 2024 we're going to hold on to that nugget of information because I have a sneaky feeling she will do it at some point. As soon as she finds and settles and gets comfortable with new YP or YP Junior, who knows, whichever you prefer. Now, while this is all going on, and we'll get some of her actual videos in a moment, let's do some more of her thirst posting. This time I have to take the audio out again because copyright, but as you can see, catching feelings, everyone. Oh yes, that's the, oh my, expression. It's a disturbing one, 
I swear I've only seen it once and it involved orange chicken. So during the month of November up to the cutoff point that I have had to use so I could get this video uploaded to YouTube, hi YouTube, she had uploaded six videos. A couple of them have done reasonably well but her views are continuing to diminish at an alarming rate. Whereas over the course of the year she'd sit and hover around between 50 and 70,000 views, now it's closer to 30 and 50. The non-tent era is not getting any better and the lack of content this month is starting to show. As we YouTubers are gearing up for vlogmas or moistmas on my part, Amberlyn Reed is renowned for uploading at least once a day for the 20 however many days she can be asked to upload for Christmas, which may well explain why there isn't as much content. However, you want to upload as much as you can to get as much money out of it, especially if your Amberlyn Reed and your views are diminishing. She has made it a concerted point to not go back to mukbangs. Now she doesn't have a caretaker, she's got to rely on herself a bit more. I'm going to show you a few videos of the six that she made this month that I think are relevant. One, turning to alcohol. The second, needing a caretaker. The third, Amberlyn Reed is the queen of girl. And the fourth, how much weight did I gain? Let's start with turning to alcohol. Okay, so the first question is, why are you suddenly no longer complaining about any of your multiple health issues that were always causing you to be set back or your mental health problems that you felt the need to feel to use as a crutch every day suddenly healed from everything? But before I answer that, I just wanna say that's really sad that like when people are vocal about their like mental health or physical stuff, that people say, oh, you're using that as a crutch. I like that you're trying to dismiss what the question is because you over the years have a track record of self-diagnosing yourself as having almost every ailment from Nurgle's garden to the point you are known for using WebMD. You are known for refusing to go to the doctor unless you can't breathe and they have to get you into the car in a forklift. Right now, you have to be very concerned. There is nobody to get you into your vehicle, which you don't drive anyway, or a vehicle. So you are effectively going to start walking the path of gaslighting to dismiss the queries because you self-diagnose. And then you make it very much all about your personality, which is a crutch. Do you think it's wise to be drinking all the time with all the medications you are on? I actually am not on any medications at all. I can't tell you the last time I took a, a medication. <laughs> it's been months since I've been off of like anxiety medicine or for my bipolar, but I actually am taking a break on the whole drinking thing. The Instagram Q&A does her no favors here. Also BPD medication, you're off those? Were you just popping extra multivitamins? I know you say you film things months in advance. So this could well be a more recent video and you've run out of your back catalog. But let's face it here, that's a load of baloney. To the second video, needing a caretaker. The part I'm going to play next is the most replayed part of the video. There are two parts, but we'll play one and then commentate and play another and commentate some more. Which is literally my most favorite thing right now. Gatorade Zero Glacier Freeze. This is my last one, so I'm going to enjoy it. I also have the Fruit Punch one. This one, ugh, it's, it's okay. But this one by far is the best one I've ever had. They're now in the dryer. Hello. All right, so clothes are done. I had to buy like these stretchy baggies. To those who watch Amblin Reed, you and I are gonna have to have a little conversation here. That was the most replayed part of her entire video. Three and a half minutes in, it was her deciding on Gatorade and doing laundry. Now, okay, we can certainly talk about the fact that she had an entire shelf in the door of the red ones. Why didn't she just buy one, taste test it first, and then buy more if she liked it? There are questions, of course there are, but wasteful Lynn is wasteful Lynn. The laundry part means nothing to me, but I have no doubt she's being chaperoned around to do these chores. The second clip, there's an omission, admission, and these are quite important, I think. I could go get a different job. I love YouTube. I don't want to quit YouTube. Right now I'm focusing on how can I healthily bring both of these things together without bombarding you guys with like, just my sadness. I'm sensing some concern for her future. Interesting. But there's more. Don't worry. I, I just, I don't want to do that again. But I'm just having a hard time. Like, and I'm... Like, stupidly, I've thought of, like, 
why don't I just go back to like filming mukbangs and it's like, that's not who I am anymore. It would be ultimately the easiest choice I could make is just eat for you guys and just eat on camera. It's funny you mention that because there is somebody who went on a weight loss journey, was doing fantastically, but then realized they could not sustain their life as a YouTuber if they changed their path for themselves. Now my view is you should always do things that are for you, yes? So if in that case you're losing views, you should get a job because clearly YouTube is not going to work for you if all you can do and contribute to YouTube with is non-tent or eating. It doesn't work for you. You're not one of the eating channels that is incredibly ripped because they go and eat Greek yogurt and salad for a few days in between each of these videos. No, you eat the Greek salad, the yogurt and the food. Video number three. Anne Boleyn Reed is the queen of world. This one does not have a most replayed part, but it does have 4.1k downvotes and not even a thousand likes. So let's let's just let's just find out what the best part of it is together. So let's see if it fits me how I want it to. Ooh, so far so good. It actually fits exactly how I wanted. It is a little longer than I wanted. As you can see here, because I wanted it to be like right here, but I'm totally fine with that. Wow. Y'all, I have had this dang crown for ever. It was during the time where everyone just like kept saying like, oh my God, beauty beauty stealing your crown. You know, if your views keep tanking, you could well be overtaken by the person paying for her viewers. The Beza queen, as it were. It could happen. You never know. Never say never. The final video of note. Yes, we're doing this. How much weight did I gain? Yet again, no timestamp or indication in the video with a most replay part to tell me what it is. But I did find it two minutes in a weigh in. Amber's weight has fluctuated from 520 something this year and 510. She's rarely gone under or stayed there for more than a month. So let's see how Amber's done. Yeah, I feel like I've, I've gained like 15 to 20 pounds. Like that's what it feels like. But I know for me when I'm swollen, so the swelling part of it, it really does mess with me, but my scale is underneath my bathroom sink and it's dusty. Cause like I said, I have not weighed myself in a very long time. I hate this. I hate this so much. I know I'm getting- Hello, it's ready. Oh boy, oh boy. Okay, moment of truth. 516. Point four pounds. Five sixteen point four. Okay, so I actually only gained like six pounds. This is fascinating to me because one of the very first videos Amberlyn put out in January of 2023 said that she wanted to weigh by the end of the year 399.8 pounds. Make all the excuses you like, but you are off by 116.4 pounds. I guess now I should do a conclusion for the year of Anne Boleyn. This year has been a year of absolute non-tent. Her social blade can confirm that as her views start to trickle down into dangerous territory. Cost of living will not help. The fact that she doesn't really produce regular content or get the viewership that she would need to justify all the crap she does, which is nothing, leads me to believe that she is on a self-destructive path. I don't know how many more years she can get away with not making any videos, actual videos, for before she eventually loses everything anyway. She's had to adapt and adjust because YouTube's changed their terms of service. So I doubt she could go back to doing mukbangs because she knows her audience who do not like her, even the Belgians didn't bother turning up after a while, they will flag her videos. They will do that because they don't like you. You created the community by lying, deceiving over and over again. You pulled the wool over your eyes only, not over the audience. They see through your nonsense and your non-tent. And now they're seeing you make more mistakes, like you did with Feline, and they're pointing at you and saying, didn't you do that with Becky? Didn't you do that with Destiny? Didn't you do that with everyone before? Because you basically had someone else on the side ready for the moment you moved on. You've gotten into some drama this year, and it's been spicy enough to trickle some views over. But the reality is you don't do anything, and you haven't done anything for years. This is the consequence of that, and it will only continue for as long as you decide to make this lazy form content that is only a degree of separation more energetic 
than that of those who do TikTok reactions. Although I would argue you'd probably get more views if you did that. Genuinely. Because at least then you could just sit and eat and watch a video and everyone gets to experience it with you. Here's an idea, Amber. If you make a goal, a weight loss goal, or you want to try and deceive us with weight loss surgery updates, why don't you instead lead by example and do something for you that improves you? I strongly believe the only way you're ever going to do that is by quitting YouTube entirely. I guess with that, we're done. We've reached the end, everyone. This one took a while, didn't it? But don't worry, Chantel's next, and that's going to be at least four, maybe six hours. It's a lot. Anyway, a big thank you to Leona who helped me compile the sources for this. I cannot do these videos without uh, assistance, as my burnout means I can't look at this as often as I would like to. And also, I'd be sorely tempted to make regular videos. I think I'd rather do one a year, though. It's a, well, two. You know what I mean. Thanks for watching these guys. Don't forget to share them if you enjoyed it, and like it if you also enjoyed it. Ta-ta.